Hi guys, this is John here from ContraBIM, and in this video we are going to be taking a look at how to generate roof framing with the Roof Wizard tool. Now you can find this tool under the Design tab, Roof Extras, Roof Maker, and there we can see we have Create Rafter, Multiple Rafters, Hipper Valley Rafter, Blocking Beams, Plate Beams, Collars, Ties, and then we have the Roof Wizard tool. Now obviously you'll notice that right now everything is grayed out, and that's because we can really only use this tool when we're in a floor plan view. So um, let's go ahead and jump there now, and we will get started with this short little exercise. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll actually just select everything we were just looking at and delete it so that we can start fresh here. Looks like I had one that was ungrouped over there, so let's delete that one. And okay, so first step here is we're, when we want to use the roof wizard tool, um, which is this option down here at the bottom, let's start with that because we can add a lot of framing there uh, with this tool first, and then we'll go through and talk about some more manual ways of adding individual elements or groups of elements at a single time. So let's click this and it says, okay, please select one roof. So in order to get this to be activated, we do need to select the roof that we're using. And we're actually still in the tool. It says down here, click a roof. So if we click the roof, there we go. We can see everything is pulled up. Now, the first setting here, I can see that everything is turned off. So let's just create rafters as an option. We can set our width and our height directly right here. Um, we can set our eave shape. So whether it's perpendicular or vertical or has some sort of uh, cut to it, um, we can actually even add a soffit framing, which will go, which will really tie in with the rafters. So if we wanted to add that, that would bring it back to the exterior walls. Um, here we can set our minimum spacing. So in this case, we'll be doing two feet and we can add a few extra rafters at either the you know the big gaps or the corners and we can choose whether we want to uh, join these at the corners or if we want to have them staggered um, really you can play with these and see which one gives you a better result um, but you know I'd recommend just go through all these settings and test them out a few times and kind of see what it gets what it does for you so okay that's rafters let's go to the next one collars and ties so this would be when we have two rafters that are tying into the same ridge and so we can either choose a collar beam which will create two of them on one on each side of those rafters or we could do a tie beam which will just be mi you know mitered at the the ends and tie it that way so this would be um yeah probably a little bit more like a a truss type framing and this would be um, well, similar to a truss, but it would have the framing on the outside. The important thing to note here is I always like plugging these in based off Project Zero. So I find this Story 2 um, does not usually work well with uh, the way that I have my story settings set up. And so I prefer to just really pay attention to the Project Zero so that way you can get this in at the correct height. Okay, once again, we have our width and our height. I'm using two by sixes here on all of this framing, so you'll notice that as we go through the settings here. Okay, ridge rafters. So this will either create it between the, the beam rafters, or if we uncheck this, it'll drop it below. So in this case, I'm going to leave it in between. And then we have a create plate beam. So this would be around the walls, and this would add essentially a, a top plate beam. I'm going to leave this unchecked for now because um, I typically like adding the the wall framing as w relating to the walls and not necessarily to the the top beams here or the, the plate beam. So um, we'll leave it as is for now unchecked. We have some blocking to create some trimmers, although I found that this doesn't necessarily work too well. Um, I haven't found where it actually even creates these trimmers. So um, something that we can... Um, Take a look at later on and then we have the hip rafters so this is along the hip and valleys <clears throat> so this is important to add here and once again we'll just leave the same settings for the width and height and our eave style so okay let's go ahead and hit okay oh one last note obviously we can change our surface that we want to apply here as well as assigning them to a layer so these are kind of a global setting here which will apply these to all of these different settings. I don't think that we can change it in one and have it change on the other, but I could be wrong. Nope. That's a global thing. So we'll set all those up just like that. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and hit OK and see what it generates for us here. Usually just takes a few seconds and all right, there we go. So um, we can certainly look at this in, uh, in 2D here, but what, what I'm noticing is we have kind of a lot of, you know, random placement here. So I can see that our, it looks like our spacing on these is pretty decent. So two feet all the way through, but it does create some added items here, some added blocking or some added rafters, I should say, um, in some areas where um, it looks like it was trying to match up some of these studs or some of these uh, rafters to the corners, which is good, but um, it also creates some additional setting or additional rafters in there that kind of looks a little bit like you know it's a little bit sloppy so um with a roof like this that has exposed uh, rafter tails it is definitely w one that we would certainly want to make sure that these the rafter spacing is nice and clean so that when you look at this that you can really see a nice clean spacing all the way through so something like this would create a little bit of a uh, an eyesore when you're looking at it um, just from a, a visual perspective so we can certainly improve on this and I find that going through and um, and manually placing these can be a way to really control the the settings and the layout um, but one thing I'll note here is um, if we select all these what's cool about this is uh, Let's select them and I just want to show real quick how we can do these takeoffs. So if we right click on our rough framing report here and we list the floor plan selection only, we can see just this selection of what we created in a matter of you know seconds here. We can see all of our beams, collar beams, rip hip rafters, jack rafters, and so on. So this is pretty cool because it really didn't take very long to apply these and we got a lot of stuff already working here. So um, if we want to select and see which ones are which, we can just highlight in 3D. And well, of course I need to suspend groups in order to do that, but, and now it's gonna bring back all my rough carpentry. So let's uh, kind of move on from this. There's all our walls. So hip rafters, we can select these just as an example. And there we go. So. Let's do this in the other method, which would be a little bit more manual of a method. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to take this entire roof assembly and I'm just going to create a copy off to the right here. And let's walk through the steps of creating these with these individual tools that we have. So first off, let's try our single rafter. So it's asking us to click a roof plane. And here we can see we have a little bit different settings for the rafters. The placement of multiple rafters, this is all grayed out right now because we can actually access this through the second tool here, that one. So let's go ahead and just create a single one. So we click the placement and there we go. We now have a single rafter. And at this point, we could of course just line it up where we want to start and then we could do a increment and multiply. So we could take this, apply it, two or copy it two feet and then just drag this through and that would help get us some nice clean spacing at least but the issue here is then we'd have to go through and individually adjust these and the other part of the the downside of this is it's not going to be cutting those for us so we can definitely improve upon this and let's tr do so with the multiples tool. So we'll click the roof that we want to work with. And then now we have this option for creating multiple rafters. So with the fixed distance here, what this does is it's going to essentially set it at two feet max. But if our spacing is not exactly on two foot increments, it will reduce those slightly. So <clears throat> to point out how this may work, we can click from here to here. And what's nice is it's automatically creating all the spacing for us. It's mitering these for us. But if we check our actual spacing here, we can see that it's okay. It's one sixteenth of an inch less. So we're not exactly on that two foot spacing, which in this case, that might be fine. Like it's uh, close enough. It's really, you know, for the visual purposes here to make sure that we have it nice and clean on the, 
on the eaves, but that's I'm probably okay with that. So um, if we wanted to get this exact, though, then we could do it in another method here by doing a fixed distance with a gap at either the the start, place it in the middle, or at the end. So I think at the end in this case would be good because we can click from here all the way over to here and we can create that spacing all the way up. But it didn't complete it all the way through here, which we can actually do if we input it in a little different manner here. So if we do the same thing and we have the same exact settings and we start from here and we go all the way diagonally up to this point, it will create it all the way through. So that's one thing that I've learned recently is that you can you don't have to go uh, exactly um, parallel with the plane of the roof. You can go diagonally and it will fill these in for you, which is nice. And if we check our spacing now, then that's exactly two feet. And the only place where it probably is not two feet would be this last one, which still is showing two feet. It would probably be this one right here where it probably cut out a little bit. So anyway, that's a nice clean way of adding in, you know, beautifully spaced rafters. And we can do so very, very quickly. Now, one thing that I would probably recommend we do is, well, I'll show you a manual method of adding in these ridge beams. So if we click on this option right here, it's going to tell us to pick the roof. So we're picking the roof and okay, this is actually the purlin. I'm sorry, that's the wrong one, but we can add in a purlin. Sorry, that was the wrong, the wrong setting there, but you can see we've added in a purlin that's really just right at the roof line because that's where I clicked. So my mistake, let's just delete that for the moment. Um, and let's try this again. So I want to create a roof beam. Sorry, it's going to be this option here. So let's click a roof and then we set the settings that we want. And with this, we can then click the, the edge and that will generate our ridge beam here. So that's pretty nice, but this would be actually one, one method that I would use if I was going to do manual placement like this, I would just select all the entire roof assembly. I would go to the roof wizard and I would just turn off everything I don't want to create. So we'll create a ridge beam and we'll, we want to make sure that we have these settings, right? The blocking, we don't need the hip rafters. Let's create these as well. So now when we create this, it's going to go through and essentially do all those. It'll give us some nice or some better connections up here, even though that doesn't look too great. Um, but at least it'll draw all those in for us and we can do all that at once. So I do like that method for at least picking up all of our uh, ridge beams and hip beams and valley beams. So there we go. Okay, so let's quickly just go through and let's add the rest of them. So um, let's start by we'll select our roofs i want to create this framing component so we'll click on the one we're going to be working on and in this case because it's on the edge and it's by itself i'll probably just do the fixed distance and we'll go from this point to this point there we go that looks good we'll do the same thing on this side there we go on this one here Let's do the same method where we go diagonally. So we'll do the fixed distance and we'll just take it all the way to the top there. Okay. Um, this one here. So once again, we can, well, there's a few things here we want to consider. First of all, I really do want these to be in alignment with this side so that we can create some, uh, some ties. So that's one thing that I'll probably want to really make some adjustments on, but let's see how close we get um, by, oh, I'm just trying to think about this. Let's try this. So I wonder if we can use the exact same, we're gonna click the roof that we want, and I wonder if we can use this where we go the distance fixed end gap and I wonder if we can actually use the same starting point and end point 
And will it create it on this side? No, it won't because it's not within there. So, okay, let's try this again. Um, I doubt it's going to be in perfect alignment, but let's see. So we're clicking on that one. We are doing the gap at the end. And so let's just go from here to here. Okay, so we can see now we obviously have a little, we're a little bit off on our spacing. Um, and so at this point, we can really go through and select these. Um, what I might do is there's probably a better way of doing this. I'm going to delete these. I'm actually going to add a guideline in here. So let's start with a fixed point, um, which we can actually do from just adding it to the ones over here that we want to line up with. And so with this, I think I'm going to use this as our starting point. And I think based on that, we should get these pretty well lined up at an exact spacing. So we'll start from here. We'll go all the way to here. And okay, so that did the trick. So we have all of these nice and clean. So with that, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to suspend the groups for the moment. And let's create those, those ties or the, the, uh, the collar beams here. So once again, I'm going to set this at a specific height. We'll go say, I don't know, 12 feet again. And we'll do the double sided. And there we go. We've now created all those collar beams. Beautiful. And so with that, let's just continue to cl close this out. Um, most of this work is in the rafter tool. And so once again, I'm just going to use that same method. We'll go diagonal. There we go. Click in these. We'll do a fixed distance because this is on the end. So we want these to be spaced nice and clean. And then we will do the same thing on this end all the way through and we got just a few more roofs here to finish out and we're almost done with this quick little lesson on the roof wizard so hopefully you're seeing how you can use this in your own workflow um, I definitely am enjoying playing around with this and um, yeah, that looks much, much better if we compare it to this automatically generated version. And it really didn't take us that much longer to do. So pretty happy with that. So there's a few extras here that we could go through and add. So just as an example, if we select a few of these here, um, we can add in some blocking. So these are the trimmers. So we can add this in and we just pick the location that we want. So we click right here and it's going to add a trimmer. I don't think we can do multiples of those at the same time, but we can try. So let's click down here. Well, it added just one. So there's probably a better way of doing that, but at least now we're getting some of these trimmers in. If we want these to be set at the exact same location, I'm not sure if that's the insertion line or not. It might be, or it's going to be that purple line. We'll see. So let's click these, go for the trimmer. So yeah, it looks like it's really right in the center is where that was. So at least if we have some guidelines in here, we can create those and um, yeah. All right, let's see what else we might want to work with here. Okay. One thing to note is we could potentially use this as our ceiling framing as well. Um, and so one thing I'll probably do here is let's, I'm actually going to grab all of this that was auto generated. I'm going to grab this roof and just delete it because we don't really need it. Let's move this entire assembly back. And I think I set it evenly at a hundred feet. Let's hope so. And so we have a section here. I'm going to just move it so that we're looking at it directly cutting down the middle of one of these. And so um, let's open this with our current view settings. Okay, there we go. So we can see our, um, our rafters. 
we can highlight up here our ridge beam, we have our collar beams. If we wanted, we could use this as a framing member for our ceiling framing as well. So I just wanted to point out that our top plate here, which would be where that ceiling member would be sitting, is at eight foot one. And so I don't think, yeah, we definitely can't create any of this from section. But if we go back here and we select our rafters with them suspended, we could actually use this as a way of creating some ceiling framing and ultimately kind of turning this into a truss. So let's try this method here of the tie beam. So in this case, we're using the tie beam and we're going to set this to, prod, or we're setting this at eight foot one to project zero. And we'll use that same width and height. We may actually want to bump this up. Maybe we go 7.25 and make this a two by eight. And so with that, let's see if it created it in our section. And there we go. So now we are adding in those. They're already cut right here, which is nice. And so we could continue to just either take that one and copy it through or, um, yeah, we have multiple options for, for working with that. So just want to point out that that's another benefit of using this tool is uh, we can create some ceiling framing with it. And let's take a look at this overall here. So we got some nice clean spacing. We've added a few little blockings there. Obviously we'd want to, we could probably just take those and just copy them because we know our spacing here is consistent. Um, we've added in that one uh, ceiling framing level there and yeah so we're looking pretty good so okay last thing I want to just point out here is let's take a look at we're going to grab all of these here well actually now that I've done this it's going to select just the individual sections here so let's do this let's grab all of these I'm going to get rid of this they are all on the same layer so we will go to our model view layer and just pick up the rough carpentry. So there we go. We should have all of that picked up. And so once again, I just want to recheck our framing takeoff. So I'm going here to rough carpentry. We can list on the floor plan, list floor plan selection only. And so this will bring through just the contents of that roof framing. And there we go. We can see all of it there because all of these have very much different um, links, it's really going to produce um, a lot of individuals here. We can see that if we unmerge here, well, actually, what I'm seeing is that it gave everything a new element ID. So we probably do have some that are similar um, names. And that's probably one of the last things that I would do here is let's just select them all. And I would prefer to go through and have these all named the same. So how we can do that is let's remove that setting and I want to add in the library part name. So if we do this, that'll pick up our rafter beams and I'm going to suspend the groups, but let's pick up all of the rafter beams. Oh, did I suspend groups? I think I did. Yeah, I did. So rafter beams, so pick them up. So we'll just call these rafter beams. Now why, it's kind of interesting here why this one did not hip rafter beam. Oh, because we did contain, so is, so that would be better. So the hip rafter beams, hip rafter. So we can just go through here and I just want to select a few of these. I'm going to temporarily hide the selection layer so I can grab these a little quicker. And I'm just going to rename these for the fact that I want these to be, uh, I want this to be is, first of all, is, in this case, the beam. So this is ridge beam. That was the hip rafter. Do we have a collar beam? We do. So this is a collar beam. Collar beam. 
And this is kind of the fun part at the end. Obviously, we need to trim out a few things here, like around that chimney, but uh, we'll deal with that later. Um, let's pick up our blocking. So pick that up. Blocking. Did I get them all? I think I did. Hip rafter. Do we have a valley? No. So that is still a hip rafter, but we can pick up the valleys just manually real quick. There's only a few of them. There's only three of them. Right? Yeah. So valley beams. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's really going to hopefully compress down our report so that we get all the consistent lengths coming through as a count instead of individually listing. So we have them all selected still. So let's go back to our report and simply just list floor plan selection so we can see this in isolation. And hopefully that's going to roll these up when we click this button. And okay, it did that a little bit. Um, so we still have probably some very much unique lengths here, which is just, you know, typical based on the geometry of the roof. So, but if we check our quantities here, we can see that we had like 14 of these, 21 of these. So we can see all of our common lengths there, which is nice. So, okay, that is it for the roof wizard tool. Hopefully that you, hopefully you picked up a lot of good tips for how you can use this on your own projects. And if you have any questions, then just leave them in the comment section and I will certainly get back to you on those. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more YouTube videos just like this where we'll explore different parts of ArchiCAD. And if you like this content, then make sure to subscribe. So. Thanks for watching and we will catch you on another video.